keto diet is a very low carb diet. The purpose of a keto diet is to encourage your body to produce ketones, which are breakdown products of fat metabolism. Ketones can be measured, and if your body is producing them, you are burning fat. In other words, a keto diet is an effective fat loss diet. But what if it is too extreme for you? Restricting your carb intake to around 20 or 30 grams per day cuts out a lot of favorite foods and limits fruits and other plant-based foods. So what do you do if keto feels out of reach? You can get fat loss results by simply reducing your carb intake and making better carb choices. This video explains the difference and how you can enhance this less extreme strategy to make fast, healthy progress. So low carb versus keto. What's the difference? Plainly stated, it is simply the number of grams of carbohydrates you consume. While there's no established cutoff point, it is generally accepted that for a person who eats 2000 calories a day to be considered a low carb dieter, their daily carb intake needs to be below 125 total grams. To be considered in the keto range, their consumption would drop to less than 50 grams per day. Now, some of you feel that it is splitting hairs to think of a keto diet and a low carb diet as separate strategies. However, I make that distinction because of the degree of food restrictions from one to the other, which I will go over in a minute. But one thing I've noticed is that we fight a lot about dieting. It seems like picking a diet is like picking a team. So you are either in Camp Keto or Camp Mediterranean or Camp Paleo or Camp Vegetarian. And if anyone disagrees with our perspective, we hurl insulting comments at them. Unfortunately, when we focus on the differences, we overlook the similarities. The reality is that all of these diets cut out the same diet destroyer, ultra processed foods. Because nearly 60% of the calories consumed by Americans are ultra processed foods, cut them out and you'll lose weight and improve your health. So all of these diets are a step in the right direction. Ultra processed foods are things like soda, potato chips, sugary cereals, cookies, cakes, candies, chicken nuggets, french fries, ice cream, and many of the toppings and dips that go with them. Not only are these foods the first to go in any healthy diet, most of them are high carb foods. So cut them out and you are already headed toward a lower carb, better carb diet. Now, when we talk about carbohydrates, the focus is on plant foods for a very good reason. Plants make carbohydrates through photosynthesis. So if it is a plant, it contains carbs. A few animal-based foods like dairy products may contain carbohydrates, but for the most part, carb foods are plant foods. This is why a keto diet limits plant foods. If you do not want to go to that extreme, then aim to eat a lower carb, better carb diet. That is achieved by choosing foods with a favorable fiber to carb ratio. I have a blog post that goes into ranking the best to worst carbs, and I will point you to that post if you would like a more in-depth list. But for a quick reference, plant foods with the best fiber to carb ratio include non-starchy vegetables, lower carb fruits, and raw nuts and seeds. So think about building your diet around a large salad with slices of avocado, berries, nuts, and seeds for one meal and having a cooked non-starchy vegetable like broccoli, asparagus, or cauliflower as a side dish along a protein entree for another meal. Animal-based foods like meat, fish, and poultry make great entrees because they provide protein and fat without carbs. If you're a breakfast eater, eggs are an additional source of protein and fat. And what you're doing by building your eating day in this way is continually feeding yourself foods that promote fat loss. To say it more clearly, foods that contain protein, fat, and fiber promote fat loss because they digest slowly and prevent blood sugar and insulin spikes. What that means to you is that your hunger stays under control longer and the energy from your meal is slowly released, providing a nice sustained level of energy with less leftover energy to go into fat storage. Then when you have lower carb, better carb food choices under control, you can add weight loss accelerators that may actually allow your body to make ketones. In other words, following a keto diet is not the only way to coax your body into making ketones. Ketones are produced when your body's primary fuel, which is glucose, is running low. A ketogenic diet leads to the production of ketones because there are so few carbs to raise blood glucose However, any action that sufficiently depletes glucose will result in the production of ketones. 
These actions include intermittent fasting and exercise. So by combining your lower carb diet with these actions, you improve fat burning. Some people will find that they must keep their carb intake in the keto range to continue losing weight. But an individual's carb tolerance is not something you can predict. It is something discovered through experience. So if starting a keto diet is intimidating, start with a lower carb, better carb diet and go from there. If you would like guidance to get started, download my 0123 strategy by clicking on the icon on screen or the link in the description area. The strategy will work for any healthy eating preference because it helps you get sugar and refined foods out of your diet and whole foods in. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.